Vertical regime applies to a situation of occupation. As emphasized by Professor Boat, three main principles govern the law of occupation. Firstly, occupation, which must remain temporary, does not entail transferal of sovereignty to the occupying power. Secondly, the occupying power has a duty of good governance for the duration of the occupation. Thirdly, the occupying power may take measures that are necessary to ensure the protection of its own interest and security. Let's briefly examine these three principles. It flows from the first rule on continuity of sovereignty, which can be found in Article 43 of the Hague Regulations, that the occupying power must leave unchanged pre-existing laws and institutions of the occupied territory, except where the occupying power is absolutely prevented from doing so. Indeed, the occupying power is considered to be a transitional authority, which does not assume sovereign power. This principle can also be deduced from Article 64.1 of Geneva Convention 4, which state that the pin law of the occupied territory shall remain in force. However, paragraph 2 of these provisions contain, contains three broad exceptions to the principle of continuity, allowing the occupying power to subject the population to provisions which are essential to enable this power. Firstly, to fulfill the obligation under Geneva Convention 4. Secondly, to maintain the orderly government of the occupied territory. Or thirdly, to ensure secu security of the occupying power. We will briefly get back to these caveats in a minute. It should also be underlined that Article 47 of Geneva Convention 4 reinforces the principle of continuity by depriving any measures that would result in a change of status of the occupied territory from having legal effect. An example of such a measure would be an attempt to annex the territory. Article 54.1 of Geneva Convention 4 guarantees the principle of continuity at both administrative and judicial levels by prohibiting altering the status of public officials or judges applying sanctions or taking coercive or discriminatory measures against them. Regarding the duty of good governance imposed upon the occupier, it is important to recall that, according to Article 43 of the Hague Regulations, the occupying power has the duty to restore and ensure public order and safety. This duty is further specified by concrete obligations contained in both the Hague Regulations and in Geneva Convention 4, aiming at ensuring the well-being of the population. It implies, among other things, that the occupying power must respect the fundamental rights of uh, the population under occupation, provide the population with adequate living conditions, including food, health care, education, medical supplies and clothing, guarantee the maintenance and, if necessary, the development of an adequate legal order and administrative apparatus, respect private property, protect family rights and provide a functioning court system which does not violate the rule of law. The respect of these obligations will be particularly important for long-term occupation, which will often require adapting existing norms or institutions to the changing needs of the local population. For instance, in order to ensure the effective administration of justice, the occupying power may engage structural reforms and, for instance, re-establish the judiciary when the judicial system has been broken down during hostilities. It is important to note that fundamental rights, which must be respected by the occupying power, are contained not only in the Hague Regulations and in Geneva Convention 4, in particular in Article 27 of this Convention, but also in human rights instruments, including instruments of both a general and a specific nature. The third rule allows the occupying power to take law enforcement measures that are necessary to ensure the protection of its security and interest, including interning members of the civilian population under certain strict conditions, unless there is a situation of armed conflict which may require the use of force. 
In order to ensure the sentence of the occupying army, two measures can be taken. Requisition in kind or services as a matter of principle against compensation, as envisaged in Article 52 of the Hague Regulations, and under certain conditions, money contributions as envisaged in Article 49 of the Hague Regulations.